Hi everyone and welcome to Storytime with Kate. This is part three of my series interview questions. This time I'm going to answer questions 11 to 24. Let's focus on question 11. In your own words, describe key ideas of the EYLF or Early Years Learning Framework. Early Years Framework is an important document for all educators, teachers, uh, room leaders, managers, so anyone who is working in early childhood education and care, in my opinion. I use EYLF every day when I'm teaching children, when I'm planning for experiences, when I'm thinking about experiences that I've done and reflect, um, and I need to reflect on them. So for me, EYLF is a working document, something that I have in front of me, like the code of ethics. In other words, EYLF is also a curriculum framework. So unlike curriculum, like we use in schools, like Australian curriculum, EYLF provides more like a guidance for our practice and outcomes for children that teachers, educators can use are broad. I use EYLF outcomes to set up goals for groups and also individual children, but then I adjust them in consultation with families and children and other educators. Question 12. Can you provide an example of intentional teaching? This question is not uncommon. I've heard it at least few times. So intentional teaching is described in the EYLF. So if you are unsure, go to the EYLF document, belonging being becoming, Review some videos that are available online from um, ECA and Queensland Department of Education and uh, make sure you do understand what intentional teaching is. This is how I would answer this question. I teach intentionally throughout the day, uh, especially if uh, I'm working with a group of children that I already know really well. E I would um, teach intentionally by setting up goals, which would be intentional, that are relevant to this group, interests, needs, and uh, feedback from families, and also on other community events, other community goals that we might have. I am intentional when I pick up a book. I also teach intentionally when I see an opportunity in play-based learning. For example, children might be building a house together outside, it's a pretend play, it's fun, but they are not sharing resources really well and they keep arguing. So I might see it as an opportunity for me to jump in and do intentional teaching that is focusing on either the use of resources, how to use them well, or scaffolding them towards conflict resolution. So that's uh, some of the example of my intentional teaching. I also might teach children intentionally uh, when uh, they are going to wash their hands or apply sunscreen. So this would be intentional teaching through demonstration. Question 13. What would you do if a child's behavior is challenging? Difficult question. So you might use uh, your real example, but you don't have to. So you might just say, what would you do? So basically what they want to know if you have any strategies. This is how I would answer this question. Uh, first, I will observe the child uh, if uh, this behavior is challenging and it's not one off event. I will document this behavior in any case is it to give the information to the other educator who is permanent in the room or for my own records. If child is hurting others, I will step in immediately and stop this behavior through redirection or having a private chat with the child explaining that I cannot let this happen because you are hurting your friends, you are hurting your peers and it's not okay. So if the child is young, like toddler or baby, the redirection will work better, but you still need to stop any biting or hitting or aggressive behavior that is happening. In the long term, the behavior that is challenging usually 
poses risk on child's learning. So I will continue observing the child, but I will need to do something else. I need to start collaboration partnerships with families. And eventually we need to develop a behavior plan with some strategies that are working and suitable for this particular child. But every time when I will have a child with challenging behavior, my approach will be unique. Question 14. How do you critically reflect? So I reflect critically using this journal, which is just uh, my reflective journal. So I write reflections at the end of each session, sometimes in between because I might have uh, some ideas that uh, were inspired by children or another educator. I also might reflect on the, f or like on the go or uh, reflect um, in action. So when I'm, I'm involved in experience. So for example, I'm telling a story and I can see that children are not very engaged. So I might uh, change it immediately because I reflected that the best way would be to stop and do something else and let them play freely for example transition them to another activity they might be hungry they might want to just play together to move physically and the story is taking too long fifteen if you are selected for this role how would you ensure to manage the room that's a loaded question it's also quite challenging um, you would say that um, at first I will try to do my best in getting to know the children, families, other educators, co-workers, routines of the center, center's philosophy. So first week will be probably more about getting to know children, introducing myself to everyone and starting to feel part of this environment. Then uh, slowly, once I survive the first week, I will start developing the routine in collaboration with children and families to make sure that we have a um, wonderful structure of the day but that is also flexible so routines that are promoting learning so i will focus on a big picture first and then start to move uh, probably uh, focusing on social development and goals then um, maybe physical development and incorporating holistic learning slowly. Also we'll use EYLF for reflections on all principles and practices and try to implement them. I also will look at QUIP or quality improvement plan and talk to the manager or supervisor to ensure that expectations of the role are met by me and asking for feedback how can I improve. So I'm uh, coming to this role with the mindset of a beginner or novice, I'm ready to learn, so please teach me and help me uh, to guide these children's learning in the best possible way. Question 14. If you are selected for this role, how would you ensure to manage the room? Oh, sorry, I already asked this question. Can you tell us about the issue that you had to deal with and how you managed it. So this question is not uncommon even for certificate three educators. I remember this was a question when I was applying for a leave position as an early childhood educator, not a teacher, certificate three. Um, think about this question. So it asks you to tell about the issue. So they might specify, so some difficult scenario, issue, they don't really tell you whether the issue was with children or with uh, co-workers, uh, environments so or families, so you might clarify. So if they will, let's say, say that um, issue of your choice, think about something that you were able to solve. So this question is typical for uh, this process of um, getting people hired and going through the interview process, they want to see that you are able to problem solve. Yeah. So think about something that you were able to solve successfully and then tell them briefly about this issue without getting too much into details. For example, once uh, we had run out of sunscreen in the room and we, we were waiting for the order, but meanwhile it was summer, it was required and to uh, comply with sun smart policy and make sure that children are safe. I was thinking about possible solutions. 
with my co-educator we had to brainstorm and was thinking first we st started to use our own sunscreens but with so many children in the room it wasn't working because we ran out of our sunscreens very quickly uh, the manager was uh, sick at the moment so we were not able to get any backup uh, sunscreen we were waiting for this big order and it was about to arrive anytime soon but meanwhile uh, I came home and had a conversation online with my colleague from another center and she recommended me to uh, try to get free samples. So I contacted Cancer Council and I found uh, that they do sometimes promotions and they had samples that are not expired. So they send us a box of samples but also a lot of other things such as paper, um, flash stalks which we used for loose part play and craft and art so yeah and the, for the time being it solved the problem so the sunscreen was great it was um, uh, fantastic for most children uh, and children with allergies had their own sunscreen anyway so that's how I solved the problem uh, next question if you experience the same problem again how would you do anything differently no, I think I would do the same thing uh, because I'm a problem solver. I just don't want to wait and uh, I feel hopeless. Uh, so I, I would like to solve problems. Yeah, I think for this particular scenario, I would do everything the same way. Next question. At times planning may be challenging and may cause stress or anxiety. How do you feel about planning? As I was saying before, um, planning is uh, one of my favorite parts of the job. I love planning for children. I like writing documentation, observations, learning stories, extensions. I like to write. So by nature, I'm a writer, so I enjoy doing that. However, at the start, uh, as a non-English speaker, I experienced uh, some difficulties in writing in full sentences, writing stories that are coherent <laughs> or cohesive. So it was quite difficult. And I remember um, that it was not my strength. So I still have all this wonderful documentation samples. <laughs> and I show them sometimes to my students and co-educators who are only starting this journey of uh, planning and programming. And I say that all the information is there. Uh, the EYLF National Quality Framework, a SQL website, has lots of wonderful webinars on documentation and planning. You can read a lot of newsletters that they created when they were uh, introducing framework and specifically quality area one of National Quality Standard. But it's only practice, uh, reflection and mentoring from other people, feedback from other people can teach you how to do planning well. So don't be shy, ask questions, get feedback, don't get upset, improve, and eventually you will get there. So I think personally I uh, like documenting, but I understand the struggle. So in case if I'll get this role, I'm happy to teach others and pass on this knowledge to others. So in this question, as you can see, you can easily acknowledge that you might experience difficulties with, do with documentation but you might say that you're a fast learner and you are open-minded and you want to get feedback and happy to be mentored by educational leader so next question what experience do you like to offer children to children what experiences um, here you need to talk about uh, play experiences and learning experience that you uh, already offered to children. So use your best uh, examples. For example, I would say uh, I offer a range of experiences to children that are targeting all five domains of development and um, help children to develop and learn through play. My experiences might be intentional. They might also be just free play experiences that I uh, facilitate or set up. But what is important uh, for me when I'm planning for experiences that are based on um, 
this age group needs and interest so they should be developmentally appropriate yet they should be stimulating engaging wonder wonderful because i am inspired by the ideas of vygotsky they usually involve social component or culture of the child language they also invite the families to participate other educators so they are communal i also inspired by reggio emilia and all my experiences uh, I used to call them investigations or uh, investigations or provocations. They are, they should be aspiring. So they should be not just usual uh, experiences, but also um, unique and amazing. So I, I can show you some pictures if you want. So I have a folio with me. So and you can show pictures of setups that you have. Um, you also can talk about some favorite things that you like to do with children. For example, my favorite thing to do is to sing and dance, do music lessons or explore music together, gardening, sustainability. I like outdoor walks. I like outdoor play. I like physical play. Um, I absolutely adore storytelling, but any sensory activity is also one of my passions. Next question why do you want to work here uh, so sometimes they ask this question at the start so you really need to consider this question and do a little bit of research um, this might include uh, asking people who already work in the center and writing down things that are important for you looking at the website uh, reading philosophy reading this job uh, description carefully uh, and trying to find as much information as you can. For example, when I was interviewed for one council based job, um, I said that I've seen your center being built and I researched before and I found that it's going to be an amazing community hub with a lot of resources. I liked your philosophy. I think it's going to be promoting uh, circles of security and family relationships. So it really resonates with me as a teacher. Uh, and I want to uh, make a difference in uh, this children's life, but I also found that this center can teach me something and I would like to work uh, in the team of, co um, of educators or colleagues who are like-minded and I really would like to learn from you. Um, next question. Where do you see yourself in five years time? Again, another very standard question for interviews. Um, you might uh, think about your career. So in early childhood education and care, uh, people underestimate career opportunities. So maybe consider if you are working as an early childhood educator certificate three, are you going to do diploma? If you are working as a diploma qualified educator, are you going to become a room leader? Maybe you are inspired to become an, a, a manager or director or an educational leader. So talk about five years time in terms of early childhood education career. This is what uh, the managers and recruiters want to hear. Here is my response. In five years time, I see myself as an educational leader, maybe a coordinator of few centers um, in terms of pedagogy. Uh, because I like pedagogy and planning, uh, programming and planning and uh, promoting uh, pedagogical uh, leadership. Um, I would like to work as an uh, educational leader of several centers, maybe council based or several kindergartens, which probably will be a kindergarten uh, advisor. So if you will set up more uh, modest uh, goals, you can say that in five years time i will see myself settled in this role getting to know children and becoming more experienced and proficient educator you don't have to have uh, career goals that are growing necessarily up high in terms of hierarchy but you need to talk about ongoing learning and your commitment to staying in the field that's what they want to hear uh, okay next question what interests you most about the company and the position we offer? Again, research based. So you need to do as much uh, research as possible and uh, come back with something like that. 
I've been following you on Facebook or Instagram, your company for many years and uh, always been inspired by your practices. So when I saw your job, this job uh, position, I was very excited and I wanted to apply. I've heard that you have very good practices. You look after team members and you support families and children. So I really want to become part of your team. Um, last question. Uh, so that's um, not necessarily going to be your last question during the interview, but uh, I thought that it would be good to wrap up. What questions do you have for us or for me? Is there anything you would like to ask us? And a lot of people say, oh, no, I don't have any questions. They might be a little bit too anxious, stressed. It's an interview um, stress, you know. But this question is very important to ask um, and, and answer as well. Uh, consider, in all seriousness, some things that you might be in, interested in. Am I going to teach by myself or would it be a team teaching position? Uh, what, the, what are the conditions like? Uh, am I going to be paid on the award or Vectia? Um, you might also ask, which room are you thinking of uh, offering for this position? Am I going to work with one uh, group of children or uh, across many age range? Just, I guess. Um, you might also ask, what program do you use to document observations? So there are many questions that you might have. So focus on two or three that are related to your professional role. And the rest, uh, I guess, will be, <laughs> uh, will be sorted eventually. So think about those questions that might be deal breakers for you, because you might not fit within this environment if uh, uh, the hours are too long, yes, yeah, so, or if the company doesn't want to be flexible and negotiate the working hours. So this is your time to ask in a polite and constructive way. And uh, then uh, when they will ask you if, um, um, like, um, m m maybe you want to wrap up interview with asking when would I know the outcome of this interview, uh, this also might be a good final note. So that's all. Thank you for watching my three uh, parts of early childhood uh, educator and teacher uh, interview questions. If you have... Um, experienced any other questions please post them in the comments below and let's have a discussion about how best answer them and how best to prepare for an interview good luck and thank you for watching